Treaders, let's talk Santa Cruz versus Specialized. Always long travel e-bikes. Let's start with the Santa Cruz because the barrier to entry is so high. So you load up your $11,000 Santa Cruz billet and you're like, is this VPP suspension all hype or is it actually the best? You get your brand new bike and you're pedaling up the fire road and it's so stable pedaling platform. It almost feels like a hardtail and you're like, this has to be the best pedaling platform on the market. Then you realize you're on an e-bike and like, who cares about a pedaling platform? And then you hit the trail and you're climbing up the dirt section. And then you realize you're like, wow, it's kind of harsh. There's no small bump compliance in the suspension. Huh. With your $11,000 bicycle, costs more than my car. You drop in this trail and the first thing you see is a mountain range of speed braking bumps. And you're like, oh boy, here we go. Do, 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 do. You're like, man, the suspension's pretty harsh. I don't know if it was worth the $11,000. And then you hit the first jump and you land and the suspension's super predictable. And you're like, wow, that was $10,000 well spent. Next part of the trail, it's a big drop and you land. VPP is super supportive on the mid stroke and the bottom stroke. It almost feels like a pillow. After that, you just hit this like chundery section of trail and there's so much mid-stroke support in this suspension design, it's absolutely amazing. Then you encounter another mountain range of braking bumps and you're like, God, VPP sucks, it's so jarring. After that, there's a jump line and VPP is the absolute king of jumping. The suspension is so predictable. I absolutely love jumping this bike. So after that run in the Santa Cruz, it's kind of a mixed bag, it's the best jumping bike but it doesn't have any small bump compliance. So you grab your Horse Link Specialized Kinevo, the absolute most expensive aluminum bike ever built. And you're climbing up the pavement and this thing is like a seesaw. But then once you turn it into the dirt, it's got all the small bump absorption you could ever want. And you're like, oh yeah, so glad I spent nine grand on this one. So then you turn down the trail, those braking bumps on the Santa Cruz, and you're like, uh-oh. And then you hit it on the FSR and you're like, yeah, VPP sucks at braking bumps. Horse link is the best. So the next part of the trail, same trail as last time. Whew, we jump and we land and the suspension's kind of wallowy and not as predictable as the Santa Cruz. So after that jump, it felt kind of weird. So I'm like, man, I really need to get my suspension tuned. And this bike comes with a piece of Rock Shock Super Deluxe. So I got to drop 700 bucks on my first ride on a shock to make this rear end more predictable. You're like, God, does this ever end? Anyway, so we get back on the trail. We're like, we're gonna make this work. Next part of the trail is a big drop. Kinevo, poof. Not supportive, but way more plush than VPP. That next part of the trail again, we're in the Chunder, and this is where FSR really shines. This thing is just a plow machine. Eats up every bump, small, big, mid. So then there's another high speed jump line, and whew, this wallowing rear end likes to buck up because you got the stock shock in it and you haven't gotten your Fox Float X2 in the mail yet. Anyway, we get through the jump line. We survive because it's 27.5 and it's not buzzing me in the butt. And there's one more drop and it's a huge drop and clap. This bike is so linear. Like you have to do all the tuning. Look, everything in life is a compromise. Specialized has chose to be a more active plush ride where the VPP system is more mid-stroke supportive. Personally, I'm a specialized guy, but the rear end on those bikes does require a lot of tuning, complex shock adjustments, tokens, as where the Santa Cruz, I can just get on it and just plow and ride straight through stuff and no tuning needed because it's all built into the frame. Well, the major pitfalls of both designs, well, they're super expensive. But in reality, these brands spend a lot of money developing their products. I'm just an average mountain biker giving you my opinion. Hope you got some value out of it. Subscribe for more e-bike content.